Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsene Zavall and in this video we're going to have a look at how to solve some of the common issues in Blender that are created through booleans and through insetting faces. So in the last video we made this chaos like brazier for some scenery and this involved using some booleans, especially the intersection boolean, but also some booleans to bring the objects together. Now all of these solutions are going to either be native to Blender or use free add-ons. I'm specifically going to be using an add-on machine tools, which is free and is a very, very good tool. It is what I use to have my pie menus when I press tab to make it really quick to swap into things like vertex mode, edge mode and face mode without having to mess around with going up to the top here or using certain buttons. It also turns those buttons of one, two, and three into shortcuts to do things, which makes your workflow much quicker. So we're gonna start with the top section of this brazier and where we use a number of different Booleans. One, an intersection Boolean to make the interesting star type shape. Another one where we used a union Boolean to add the ring that's in the center. And then a final one where we're gonna have joined the rivets onto the shape, again, using a union Boolean. So let's check this for errors using the 3D print toolbox add-on. Now this is a free add-on. As mentioned, everything is gonna be a free add-on. If I go to preferences here and I go and type in 3D dash print, you can see that there. You do need to have the dash, otherwise this won't come up. If I just type in 3D and a space, it won't come up. So 3D dash print, make sure that's ticked. And then on the end panel at the side, so you can hide it or bring it out with N, go to 3D print, select the object you want and click check all. So in this instance, we've got a few issues that we're gonna to need to deal with. We've got some non-manifold edges, that's gonna cause problems printing, some intersecting faces and some non-flat faces, all of which could cause some problems when printing. So let's have a look at how we're gonna solve those issues. So if I tab into vertex mode, I can click on something like the non-flat edges and it will highlight where these non-flat faces are. And we're gonna to have to fix these. Now these can be caused by a range of different things, similarly with the non-manifold edges. And one of the common ones is that we've got vertices on top of each other. So I'm just gonna press tab and go into vertex mode. And then I'm gonna press A, M, and then I'm gonna merge by distance. That's gonna take any vertices that are directly on top of each other, merge them into one, and then attempt to fix any of the surrounding geometry to make that work. And we should have removed a load of vertices that way, in this instance, 249. So that was definitely some issues there. So let's click check all again and see what that's done. So that has removed a lot of our problems. It's removed a lot of our non-manifold edges, our intersecting faces, and it's still left some non-flat faces. Now what I will say is that when this hasn't worked perfectly, some of the non-manifold edges, for example, and the intersecting faces, you're probably gonna be able to solve these in exactly the same way as we're gonna solve the non-flat faces. So most of the cleanup is the same. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift and Z to go into X-ray mode, and I'm gonna click non-flat faces to highlight the non-flat faces. Now this just makes it easier to see and most of these are fairly large. We have got some smaller ones down here. Let's deal with these larger ones. So Shift and Z to come out of X-ray mode and we can start having a look at this. So let's deal with this one over here. I'm not gonna deal with every single one on this. It would take too long, but this should give you an idea of what we need to do. And if I go into vertex mode, so tab and vertex mode, if we're using machine tools, we can see this issue here. We've got this face that's said to not be flat, and we've got these vertices that are on this face breaking it up a bit, and that causes a problem. So we need to fix these. And there's several ways of us doing this, and it's entirely up to you which one you choose. It's generally preference. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click that as one of the vertices that's probably not really needed. And I want to bring that to this vertex here. And then I'm gonna do the same with this one and this one. Now, just so you know how I've made this decision, because we could have done this a different way. I could, for example, move this vertex into this vertex, but that won't fix, or in fact, that will flex this shape here more. And that's not what I want. I want to try and keep, if I go into face mode, this face as flat as possible. And obviously shifting this vertex here is gonna leave it non-flat. So everything I should do should be to try and preserve this face as much as possible. So the first thing I can do to move these around is that I can just press GG and that will allow me to move this around. And you'll see it will stop when I get to another vertex. And all this is gonna do is gonna keep it on the line of that face. Now at the moment, this isn't gonna do anything because if I click here and press G again, you can see it's still got the original vertex left. So I'm gonna press 
Control and Z to undo that. And the reason why is that I do not have this option clicked here, which is the auto merge vertices. What auto merge vertices does is that if I move any vertex onto another vertex, so I've just pressed G twice again, it will merge them and now this is one vertex. So that's the first way I can move things around. So I can press G, which allows it to move, G again, which constrains it to the edge, and then I can move it to the vertex I want to merge it with. The other option is that I can use snapping. So if I go up here and click vertex and turn snapping on, and I can just press G and then move it onto the vertex that I want it to, it will snap to that vertex, click, and then it's merged as well. So some people prefer that it's a little bit faster for some people. I actually prefer the GG method. If I was gonna use one of the two, I'm gonna turn snapping off. The other method, which if you've got a lot of vertices to combine together is quicker, is I can click that, press shift, that and that. They're the three vertices I don't want. I want them combining to this one here. So I'm gonna click that last and I'm gonna press M and then at last and they'll merge at the last one. Alternatively, I could just press M and then L and it will do the same thing. So that's cleaned up that problem there. And we're probably gonna have a few more with this face. So let's go back and have another look. So I'm gonna press check all again. This still remains at 35. Let's click it. Yep, this is still a problem. Vertex mode, let's go and have a look where these issues are. So no issue there, no issues down here. And ah, we've got a similar problem here where this face is being cut by that vertex and it's causing Blender some problems in recognizing it. So again, GG, shift it along and then that should be fine. Check all and then that's fixed that face. That's no longer a problem. Now we're gonna have similar issues probably all around here. For example, we've got the same one here. So that would just take a bit of time to go in and fix these vertices. So we are gonna to need to clean these up and that will just be the same. Now I'm gonna talk about one way that does make this slightly quicker. And I do mean barely, it just takes one less click. But when you're gonna to have to do this a lot of times, one less click can really make a difference. And it's using an add-on that is free that has a lot of other benefits. And that is using a free add-on called Machine Tools. If I go to Edit and Preferences, this is not something that comes natively with Blender. You do need to download this from somewhere like Blender Marketplace. There's a place where you can add in what price you want it to be and you can put in zero or you can put something in to give the guys that have made this some money, which obviously is a really nice idea. These are also the people that make an add-on called Mesh Machine, which is fantastic. That one is paid for. But if I go into Machine Tools, it will look like this. And I want to activate that. And importantly, we're gonna to need to have a look at the preferences here to add some of these in. So first thing, you're gonna have all of these options here, if I make this larger, of what you can use. I'm just gonna talk about Smartvert and the cleanup option. So click those two if you don't have them. To be fair, I normally have more than this on. The other thing that this does is it has this modes pie, and I also use the cursor and origin pie a lot. I'll show you those in a second. The final thing is, make sure this toggle cavity curvature off in edit mode, I always tick that off. It creates a lot of problems for add-ons that automatically toggle on or off edit mode, so I get rid of that. That is if you use cavity, which I use a lot to try and make things clearer. If you wanna have a look at what that does, do feel free to have a look at my settings video, which has a link in the description. So as always, save preferences. If you don't have auto save on, close that and just quickly the pie menu is the one that where if I press tab it brings up the options of vertex edge and face there so I can quite quickly just go into vertex mode or tab to the side to get face mode tab and down to get edge mode tab and up to get object mode it makes things really quick to move between so vertex mode and let's look what this does now because we have this tab option what you don't need to use is now one two and three to change between vertex mode edge mode and face mode which for some people takes a bit of time getting used to, but it does mean that those one, twos and threes can be used for other options. For example, here, if I click there, there, there and there, normally I'd have to click M, then merge at last or M and L, but now I can just press one and it does the same thing. I know that sounds like not much to only have to press one button less, but where that one is right next to your finger, I mean, my hand normally stays pretty much over the left side of my keyboard for using things like tab and A and shift and control just for moving around. It does make things a lot faster than having to pick through options. So that's what the Smartvert does. It allows us to do that. It does also, not that this is gonna be useful in this instance, allow that if you click two vertices and press shift and one, it will merge at center. 
We don't want that here. That's going to cause more problems than it's worth. So make sure that one's last one. And then we've got that there. So that's going to clean this up really nicely. It's going to take a little bit of time for us to go through, find these errors and just fix them using that methodology. But as we go through, we are going to reduce our non-flat faces as we go. So quite quick, quite easy. It just takes a little bit of time to find those issues. Now I'm expecting somewhere there is going to be a different issue that we're going to look at for the non-flat faces. So let me click that and find where our non-flat faces are. Ah, we should probably have this issue here. Now this, if we go into vertex mode, is a similar problem where we've got a vertex in between two other locations. Essentially, Blender does not like this. There's no reason for this to be here. This should be one flat edge and it's causing it some confusion. Now we can do the standard thing of GG, move that to the side, merge it together, or click one merge by last. But there's probably gonna be a few of these. In this instance, maybe not loads. We've got to have one here, one here inevitably, and then another two there. So not too many, but if this was a complex object, this could happen quite a lot. You can find lots of places where just for some reason they'll be on this, let's say this edge, if I just subdivide it, okay, you'll find that there's loads of just random vertices that aren't required and they cause a problem for Blender. So we can fix that the other way, just GG, move things around or merge by last or by pressing one on machine tools. But machine tools does have one extra add on. That's the one where it said mesh cleanup. And that means that all I have to do with this object selected is press three and it will actually delete all of those extra vertices. It also, if we've got some sort of issue, I'm gonna make this issue here. Um, I'm gonna press E to extrude that. So if we've got this object here, which literally is serving no purpose, it's just causing a problem, but does happen sometimes where we do Booleans, rarely, or we've gone through and changed a lot. Again, if I press three, it will recognize that there's no faces attached to that edge or those vertices, and it's causing a problem, so it will delete that. So that machine tools cleanup is really, really useful. There are other things it can do where you use this degenerate slider. And what that will do is that will try and fix errors by just moving the mesh. For example, if I go to non-flat faces here. Oh, and I should say this before we go any further. You'll notice that this while being fixed is still coming up. That's because I haven't clicked check all again. If I press check all again, now when I click non-flat faces, it will go. So you do need to click check all whenever you fix things, otherwise it will still show up as an issue. So if I come over here and I press vertex mode and I press three, it's not gonna do anything, but I can click degenerate and I can increase how much we're allowing it to degenerate by or scroll. And what you'll see is it will start moving the faces itself to try and fix it. But in many instances here, you'll see this has actually created more problems. I generally stay away from this. So I'm gonna control and Z to undo that. Uh, you can use it a little bit. For example, if I do it again, put that down to zero and start again, you'll notice that if I start moving up slightly, it's fixed that one and that will work, but it has problems. So I generally try to avoid that degenerate tool or I'd use it a little bit and then see what it's done and then go in and fix the rest. So just be careful with that because that does mess around with the mesh and it's not as perfect as it could be. So up to you whether you choose to try that out. It's essentially a less well-formed version of a tool that they have in Mesh Machine, which allows you to fix these problems with Booleans much more quickly, but it's paid for, so I'm keeping this with the free versions only. If you would like me to cover some more things about Mesh Machine, do say so in the comment section, I'd happily make a video on that. So essentially to fix those issues, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through fixing those non-flat faces, and then that will create a mesh that's perfectly fine. The other problem that we often get with meshes is when we use the inset tool. Now the inset tool, if I go into face mode and click here, is where we just press I and we bring something in. For example, I might want to extrude that out to make some sort of raised bit there. I might want to do that on all of these panels. And this hasn't caused any problems here because as I inserted it, it's only coming off of one vertex per corner. If I go into vertex mode, there's only one on each corner and insetting those in is perfectly simple. I'm gonna undo those. However, when we've got more rounded objects, this can cause a problem. So if I go into vertex mode and I select all of these vertices, because I might want to make a slightly different shape, we can control shift and B. And if I use that mouse wheel, I can get this really smooth, something like that. 
it's going to look really nice. However, this can cause us some problems. If we go into face mode here and I decide I want to inset this to extrude something out, press I, you can see that as I get this towards each other, let's say I go to here, we've got a problem where Blender hasn't been able to work out how these should combine together as they intersect. And this has caused us lots of problems here. And if I went to then extrude this out with E, we've got lots of issues. So I don't want to do that. What I need to do is I need to fix these corners first. And there's a few ways that I can do this, but it uses similar ideas. So if I go into vertex mode, we can see there's a lot of vertices here that are causing problems. And essentially what I want to do is try and fix this so that the points where I feel it should intersect, I'm saying about here, is actually the point it intersects. So all I can do is select that object, GG to slide along, get it to that point there, to about as good as I can make it, onto that edge. Now notice this hasn't combined in any way. What I need to do now is select all of the other vertices, select that one last, and again, just use that one tool, and I've brought everything together. So now I don't have that problem. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I want it to be where these edges intersect. So I'm gonna select that one, GG, bring it along to as perfectly as I can get it and then select the other ones and then one and I've solved that problem and now I can go into face mode and extrude that and I could do that all around to give this a little bit of extra detail here. Finally as a bonus I just want to show you one more thing that we can do with machine tools that can be helpful in a number of situations but also for solving these problems with insets. So I'm starting with a cube and then what we're going to do is we're going to come to edge mode and I'm going to bevel this. So control and B and we've got our bevel here. Now this is going to cause a similar problem if I go into face mode and I click I to inset it. As soon as I go past a bit too far, we're going to start getting these issues here where we can't inset it without causing problems. But there are some funky tricks that we can start doing now using machine tools and one more of those pie options. So just to be clear, I could go through this the way that I had before where I press GG and move it along and try to guesstimate where it is. But if I want this to be perfect, because this is a cube and everything's aligned quite nicely, we can use what's called the align pie. So if I go to edit preferences, I'm back in my machine tools options and I come down here and I select that I want the align pie. What this gives me the cool option to do is if I select a vertex, let's say this one, and then shift click a second vertex and press Alt A. I get all these options of how this is going to align and this is just using the angles that I can see. So I want this vertex here to move this way to align with the vertex. We can't actually quite see that. I'm just gonna move slightly and Alt A just so we can see that better. I want this to move to the right to align with that. So I just go to the right and it is now perfectly aligned. I didn't have to guess it, everything was perfect. I just select those, select that one, press one, and now this is perfectly inset compared to all of these edges. We've got no slight errors with where that is, and I can just go into face mode and extrude that out. So that align tool is really, really helpful, and it can allow you to do some really, really funky things, like if, for example, I go into vertex mode, and for some reason, I don't know why, I've created a problem here, and for some reason, I can't undo it. Maybe I've gone and worked on something else, and then I've realized that I've got this problem. If it wasn't that extreme, I can quite easily fix that by coming here, going to there, Alt A, I want to align to the right, here and here, Alt A and now I want to align there and then that one and that one and I want to Alt A and I want to align down and then it's all fixed. And these are perfectly at right angles just the way they should be. So some nice simple ways there of cleaning up your meshes. They are a little time consuming if you've got a lot of problems and I would normally recommend that you do that each time you boolean things together. You use that 3D print check because it's going to save you a lot of time and it creates less of a pain at the end where you try to do this right at the end of making your object.